Sam. Turn off. Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, um, I hope you guys are all doing well. So I thought in today's video I was going to do like a super chilled, um, like really super chilled video um, and I thought I would just sit down and just have a chat, like let's just sit down and have a chat, do you know what I mean? Like, So I did ask over on my Instagram, I said that I was filming this video and I wanted you guys just to leave down some topics, some questions, literally anything. Also, what do we think to this hair? Like, I've tried to do, you know, something to it, but it's just not really gone very well. So, um, I just don't, just ignore it. <laughs> so, I really hope you guys enjoy this video. Don't forget to like, comment down below if you want to. Um, and yeah, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I am doing a giveaway at 500 subscribers. So, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get us closer to that 500 for me to do the giveaway. Okay, so I've got a few questions um, and topics that you guys wanted me to talk about. Just before we get into this video, grab your cups of tea, grab your hot chocolates, because in my case, I don't drink tea or coffee. I'm really boring. Oh my God, that is such a good hot chocolate. I've used the um, like oat milk barista version and it's just incredible. So, I got quite a few on the law of attraction so no one's kind of asked me like a specific like um question right they just kind of asked me to talk about it so um i'm gonna start off with the law of attraction because it's something that i really really do believe in and i'm very passionate about it when i put my mind to it and i think about it i'm like wow what a powerful process to live by in life so obviously you guys if you have been living under a rock everyone must know this book it is the secret book now i first got given this book <laughs> sounds so stupid but when i was at boarding school um i went for a really like tough time um and my boarding mistress was like you need to read this book and i was like a book like i was like i think year 11 or year 10 and i was like i'm not reading the book like it's just not a bit of me so do you know what I actually I took the time to read it and I was like okay um and that's when I first got introduced to The Secret and then I actually that was the first time I realised that my dad was really really into it as well and through everything he's had he'd had it for quite a while which I had no idea like I didn't even know this book existed um if you're going through a hard time in life or you're just feeling really shit and really like I don't know you don't know what to do with your life. Um, this book is really, really good. It's all about the law of attraction and manifesting your life, your dreams, everything. Um, I do really, I do truly believe in manifestation. I've seen so many real life stories. And that's what I love about this, this book, that it has real life stories in it. So it's not just like you're reading it and you're like, oh, I can never, I can never apply that into my life because it's never going to work. It is going to work. I do truly believe that you can literally manifest your whole life and I've seen with people, for example Ellie Darby, like I watched her, um, she was talking about like manifestation, law of attraction and stuff and she literally manifested her whole life and guys it works, it's true um, and I definitely 100% believe in that sort of stuff. Um, I did actually put a poll on my Instagram not that long ago and I was like what's everyone's opinion on the law of attraction is it a load of rubbish do you believe in it and quite a f well pretty much the whole poll was like insane believe in it whenever i'm feeling like really really down and like we all get down days like you you wouldn't be perfect if you didn't get a down day or you just felt really like that you didn't have anything good going on in your life read this so yeah i don't really know how much to talk about on this subject all i can say is that i 100 percent believe in law of attraction she started doing like mood boards and vision boards and stuff like that for how i want to manifest my life and that's a great way to kind of put it onto paper because you're actually visually looking at it you're you're thinking it you're you know all your ideas are on a bit of paper what you want your life to be so i have actually done a mood board which was so fun to do i did it in lockdown <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's a really good way to manifest. Um, obviously, meditation is so good to kind of get in touch with your thoughts and stuff like that. But yeah, God, I'm literally sweating what is going on. I think it's the hot chocolate. Anyway, that's enough rambling. So the next one I got is opinion on OnlyFans. Um, okay, a bit of a controversial subject, I'm not going to lie. 
Um, I my overall opinion on OnlyFans is get your money, girl. <laughs> like, if I'm not gonna sit here and judge people that do OnlyFans because at the end of the day, they are doing, they are earning a living, and it personally, it's not the way that I would like to earn a living. But that doesn't mean that I would ever judge or have an opinion on someone else doing it. Personally, like, it's just ne nothing I would ever do. Um, just because I don't think, one, I don't have the body conf confidence to do it, and two, I'm just not, I don't know, the thought of, like, me posting a picture and then it being out there forever, <laughs> it's just not, it really scares me, but honestly, if you're going to do it, then good on ya, like, go get your money, there's other ways to earn money, but if that's what you want to do, I just believe that if you enjoy what you're doing in life, do it, fuck everyone else. Can you be friends with an ex? Um, so I think oh, it depends what kind of ex they are. Like if if it's a kind of ex where you know it's like you're constantly going back to each other and then you can't call it friends, um, I think that's really unhealthy and I think it's really toxic. I think it's an ex is an ex for a reason and I think you can do so much better then going back it's literally like taking the bins out and then bringing them back in you know i think yeah in cer in certain circumstances you can be friends with an ex because i mean you could have had such an amazing relationship where you're literally like where you, your friendship like the friendship was more of a value to you than the actual relationship was so i think that you could potentially be friends with an ex but don't let it get toxic and don't let the friendship become more i mean if it did become more and you did decide that it was meant to be and you got back together, amazing. But certain circumstances, I don't think you can be friends with an ex because it does become toxic. Okay, opinion on dating apps. Are they worth it for the long run? Um, guys, I think this is actually like a really good topic to talk about because I truly believe that dating apps, like you can find like your true love on dating apps because that is what the generation is about nowadays. Do you know what I mean? Like getting on Tinder and finding your true love. That's how, I mean, it's not all about like going into a bar and meeting the love of your life. Like, does that really happen anymore? So yeah, I mean, I am not an expert on dating apps. The only dating app I have had is Tinder. But I mean, it's literally one of those apps that's on my phone and then I go on it like once a year when I'm feeling a little bit like I need a little bit of attention, do you know what I mean? I think like dating apps could can generally be like a great way to meet someone and I think like there's, there's so many nowadays that you could just, I mean, I don't know, you, you, you could meet someone in the long run. So yeah, I think if you want to go on a dating app, no one's going to judge you. Okay, right, so sticking on the subject of like dating apps and can you be friends with an ex, um, someone's put how to get over an ex. Um, now, I'm no professional in this subject. Speaking from like personal preference, I've been in, I would say like two serious relationships and I would say the best thing to do, like the first thing to do to get over an ex is to generally just delete them out of your life because the more that you're seeing them in your life the more you're thinking like oh like I need to message them I need to do that if you literally block delete remove then there is no way you can see what they're doing who they're with like I just think that is the best possible way to get over an ex because you're literally deleting that that part of your life you're deleting it out of your life so you don't need to visit it you don't need to look at it and it's an end of a chapter so at the end of the day why go back to a chapter when you, when you've got your whole life to live do you know what i mean so i think um i don't think it's possible to physically like get over an ex when you're seeing what they're doing all the time and you're like looking who they're with i think that's when it starts to get really toxic but i think like one of the best things to do to get over an ex is generally just delete them um other than that, I just think, like, spend time with your friends. It's like, taking your mind off it is, like, the biggest, biggest part of getting over an ex because you're, you're distracting yourself. So spend time, do things that you love, spend time with the people that you love and that you want to be with because you've probably spent half of your life being with him or being with her that you want to, you've kind of missed time with your friends. And I think, obviously, seeing your friends and doing fun stuff, like going out, I'm not saying go out and have, like, five one-night stands. That is not the answer. Okay. Settled. <laughs> but, yeah, I think just um, distracting yourself, spending, doing stuff that you love and 
just living your best life because you're a boss, okay? Favourite holiday destination and why? Now, someone actually wanted me to do a video on like best holiday destination, so let me know if you want that, but um, oh God. I've just realised I forgot to put lip liner on and that's really going to annoy me. I completely forgot. God, that is a hard one because I've been to some beautiful places. Um, probably like my favourite. I love Amsterdam. Like honestly, Amsterdam will always have a special place in my heart. Like me and Jolie will go every year, like no matter what. Okay, maybe if we're not still in a global pandemic, but I will try and find a way to go to Amsterdam once a year because it is literally, that place has a special place in my heart. But abroad, obviously I know Amsterdam's abroad, but like if we're going to somewhere that's like sunbathing holiday, I would say Egypt was probably one of my favourite holidays because that was so, so good. Um, I, we, lo we used to always love Menorca. Menorca was one of our favourite holidays. We used to go every single year. Um, but yeah, I think like a mixture of Amsterdam because I just love Amsterdam. I, I'm, I'm just... I find myself so happy when I'm there like I don't know what it is I just I love the culture I love everything about it like I just I love walking Roman streets of Amsterdam like it's just my favorite place Um, someone's said mental health Um, okay I feel like it's gone cold mental health is something that personally I have never really really struggle with my mental health um and that's actually due to this this book like i know it sounds silly but like like i said when i'm having really like a shit day i always refer to that book and i always change my thoughts so mental health i don't know i've never really been someone that has had really really bad mental health and like fingers crossed touch wood that i don't ever have to suffer, suffer with my mental health but i think the biggest thing um, with mental health is to make sure that you talk and you, you're vocal and you literally like you don't bottle up what you're thinking and what your thoughts are because the best thing you can do is just talk to someone because at the end of the day even if you think they're not listening they're gonna listen and just getting it out just getting it out in the open just it makes it makes you feel like a lift uh, a weight's been lifted off your shoulder um, so I think if you are suffering with mental health, definitely talk to people, talk to someone, talk to anyone. But I think obviously um, seeking help and seeking advice from professionals is obviously the best thing to do when you're suffering with mental health. But just surround yourself with good vibes and good people. How has lockdown been for you? Um, honestly, like I am not even that mad at lockdown. Like I have learned so much about myself and about other things in lockdown that I think I actually really cherish like I will cherish this time because I was thinking about it the other day like when we all eventually do get back to normal and we go back to work and I go back to uni and like I I will miss this time like I know I will I'll miss the time that I sat down and did a jigsaw puzzle and I'll miss the time that I went on bike rides and got to sleep in until like 11 every day like I know we've all moaned about it and I have moaned about it but like, I generally think that these memories that we made in lockdown will make history. And um, obviously, thanks to YouTube, um, I lockdown was the reason why I kickstarted my YouTube. I was so bad at filming. I was filming like every six months. Like I'm not even joking. I I've been doing YouTube properly for like nine months now, and. I've only started taking it seriously because of lockdown because I had nothing else to do and I'm so thankful for lockdown and I think I'll always remember it because that's when I actually properly kickstarted YouTube and you know I've been filming videos I've been spending time with family which when you're at uni spending time with family you cherish a lot because obviously you don't get to see family a lot um, okay sticking on the subject of lockdown someone has said plans for after lockdown um, so obviously I would love to go away um, I was actually meant to be going to Ibiza on the 14th so it is the 11th now so three days time I was meant to be in Ibiza but you know what can you do I'm not going to sit here and moan about it so I would love to me and my sister are actually talking about like booking a little city break um, That I think that would be really great but at the moment obviously I don't have a job so that is going to be my first thing to do after lockdown is to apply for jobs I also think a big night out is very very needed honestly if you see me on the floor in a nightclub just mind your own business because it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be a messy one yeah other than that um probably oh go to the cinema honestly if you know me personally you know I live 
at the cinema. It's one of my favourite things to do. I love going to the cinema. So that is going to be definitely a plan after lockdown, going to the cinema. Okay, so I feel like I have literally natted on for the longest time. My drink is cold, that is proof. <laughs> um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this really super chilled video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, leave a comment down below if you want to. And yeah, I will see you in my next video.